I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Bottom line, it gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place. In fact, over 21,000 companies are using NetSuite right now, so you'll be in great company right alongside them. So let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash school. It's easy to feel good and to be certain when the outside world is giving you all the cues that trigger those feelings organically. In other words, if everything's going great, you're closing every single person that day, yeah, it's pretty easy to pop into that peak state, right? But that's fantasy land. That's not the way things work in the real world. You know, we have good days, meaning in terms of empirically, the outside forces, there's good things, there's bad things, you have problems at home, you have great days, don't. So the point is, is that you're gonna walk, you know, if you let's look at this over a period of a month, you're gonna walk into work, go into work each day, and some days you naturally, based because of environmental factors and just how you feel inside, you're gonna walk in, let's let's draw a graph here, right? You're gonna walk in and here's one, here's ten. Ten is like a combination of those from the best, here's the worst of those states, right? Every once in a while, you're going to walk in and you're going to just naturally, because of what's going on in your life and how you feel, how you slept, and bam, you're in that 10. You're just feeling absolutely certain and you're damn sure of it, right? That's going to happen some days. And then probably once a year, maybe, you know, you're just going to be like almost like a pooch screw, like where you just feel shitty. You can't, you know, maybe even sick, by the way, where, you, where you're just like the worst, you're uncertain, whatever's going on, your wife just left you, the landlord's evicting you, the last 50 people fucking slam the door in your face, everyone hung up the phone on, you haven't closed in a week, whatever's, whatever's going on, your boss told you you're an asshole, your girlfriend told you you're a bigger asshole, all right, and you're as close to a one, right? Well, now imagine your closing rate, imagine, so you have a baseline, here's your 100%. So on your best day, in other words, based on your natural talent and how much training you have with a straight line, you're gonna have a baseline closing rate. Where you'll close, let's say, five out of 10 people. On your best day, you don't close everyone, it's not the way the world works, right? So on your best day, you'll close five. That's when you're at a 10, you're here. As you slide down here and your state diminishes each day, on any given day, this will go to four, three, two point, you get it? So you, because you can't access the resources that you have, okay? Does that, does that kind of clarify the way this works? So it's not so black and white where like you walk in a disempowered state and you don't close anybody. That's not what, and that's that, I think the mistake that we make is that, you know, it doesn't seem like it really matters that much state management as much, because you're like, well, you know, I, I, I can kind of, I can, I can block it out. Maybe you can, to like a seven or an eight, but, I'm telling you, I, I, I myself, I can, my son knows this, I can, no matter what the fuck is going on in my life, right, but I can literally yeah. instantly snap into an ultra-empowered state block, everything out, and be the best I can be. That's me, that's weird, it's almost rare, it's very rare, it's weird. I can go from anger, negativity, right, in one split second in a sales situation, I trigger that state. That's a natural ability I was born with, and somehow because my weirdness got reinforced throughout my life. Most people aren't like me. And, you know, for, 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 for everyone else, which is probably you, I have a solution for you that actually can make you like me, not like your fucking crazy mind, okay? But I can show you a way to get yourself into that peak state of absolute certainty at those key moments when it matters most. When you walk in the door for a sale, when someone walks in your door and you pick up a phone, whatever it might be, making a big decision, negotiating an important deal, dealing with people, any situation of those, get you into that peak state of certainty, right? Now, I just want you to understand, like, it's not just for sales here. This applies to all aspects of life, right? So, okay, if you're a salesman, right? Now, let me say this slowly here, watch. You're a salesperson and you knock on someone's door 
And in that moment, you're in a state of fear, uncertainty, some doubt, you're, 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 you're just not feeling right. I don't care how great of a salesman that you are, in that moment, how good of a salesman can you be? You can't, you get, you can't access your greatness. You're blocked. You're blocked. Same thing goes for a parent. Let's say, you know, you have kids, right? And many of you probably do, some don't, it doesn't matter. Imagine you're a parent, you have a couple of kids, you love them to death. You've probably read some books on parenting at this point, right? So you know some the skills of parenting, right? And you typically are a great parent, but let's say you come home from work, you walk in the door and you're in a state of overwhelm and anger and impatience. Well, how good of a parent can you be in that moment? Not very much, not very good parent. You're blocked from accessing your parenting skills. In the same way a salesperson is blocked from accessing their sales skills. That's why state management is so important, so crucial. And that's why every morning I made sure I ended my meeting with a rah-rah pump, getting people into an elevated state. Now, just so you know, I didn't call it state manager back then. I never heard of state manager. We called it getting negative back then. You gotta be positive, getting pumped up. So intuitively, I knew that is before I really studied this stuff and really made it into a system. I knew that if my guys were negative, that they just couldn't close it at the same level. So even during the day, if at any point during the day I saw the energy dip and everyone just like losing that pump, that certainty, I'd stop, I'd make everyone put down the phone, I'd do a quick two or three minute pump up, get them back on the phone and watch and the sales would go right back up to the highest level. That's how important state management is. Didn't call it back then, but that's what it is, okay? So now I want to explain to you exactly it's specific now. So you get it, everyone, now that I explain how important, how crucial this is, let me show you a surefire way, just a system I created for triggering a peak state of certainty at will. Now remember, what this is not, this is not about being in a state of absolute certainty all the time. You don't want to walk around in a state of certainty, I mean, constantly. I mean, what do you call someone who walks around all day long with their chest puffed out, and their arms, their pulled, shoulders pulled back, and their head held high, and having a what, what do you call someone like that? We call them an asshole, right? So that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about state management in the sense that in those crucial moments when it matters most, triggering a peak state right beforehand, which means essentially blocking out the outside forces that have caused you to land at a certain state organically. So organically in that moment when you're about to go into a situation of influence, you might be at a six organically. I'm gonna show you how to intervene on that and bring yourself up to an absolute 10 and damn sure of it. That's, a val that's an invaluable skill. I mean, I'm telling you, once you learn this, I've taught this around the world and it's so liberating. And now I'm really teaching it at a very deep level, really deeper than I've ever taught it before because I'm really digging in here. And I want you to understand how important it is. That's why I spent so much time building up to this moment. So let's get specific now. All right, listen, you don't need to tell me that running a business is hard work. But if you're still using QuickBooks and spreadsheets, chances are that you're making it far more difficult than it needs to be. That's why it is time to upgrade now to NetSuite by Oracle. Stop paying for multiple systems. Don't give you the information you need when you need it and ditch all those spreadsheets and old outdated software programs that you've outgrown and just upgrade now. NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Bottom line, it gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place. Best of all, NetSuite is for everyone. Whether your business is doing a million dollars or a hundred million dollars a year, you're going to save a ton of money and a ton of time as well with NetSuite. In fact, over 21,000 companies are using NetSuite right now. So you'll be in great 
company right alongside them. So let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash school. My journey with state management started, I mean, I started calling it state management, was when I started studying what's called NLP. You guys have probably heard of NLP, okay? Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I had the benefit of studying directly with Dr. Richard Bandler, who invented NLP, along with a guy named Grinder, okay? But Bandler is really the famous one. He was like, you know, the personality behind it. And I think he was more of the psychologist. Grinder might have been more of the numbers guy, but maybe I'm wrong, so don't quote me on that, right? So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. All right, and what this is about, it's a system of advanced psychology that's about making near instant changes in your personality by treating your brain almost like it's a computer. And that essentially because your brain functions like a computer, that if you understand what the language is, what software, right, the language, you know, essentially what language your brain speaks, which is actually English or whatever language you speak, that's the software of the brain. And if you know how to write code, you can intervene and change your patterns. You can actually intervene in yourself and change your patterns, right? There's a lot of different applications for NLP. And, I, you know, and, there, and many of them are really powerful. Some are as powerful. There are two that I believe are extremely powerful. One of them is called a timeline regression. And I actually did that with you guys once. I did a timeline regression that I learned from Bama, right? Where you go in and you use this to change belief systems. So you actually intervene on your beliefs by going into like, not a hypnotic state, but going to a, an intense state of concentration and going back and actually, you know, essentially altering the way you look at things and reordering your beliefs, very powerful stuff. That's the first one. The second thing, is this process called anchoring. That's the second very powerful process I found in NLP. The problem was, is that it didn't really work for me. In other words, I, and I'm gonna split, let me explain what anchoring is, but I want you to understand that I, I think it's great what they did with NLP, but the problem was, is as brilliant as it was, it wasn't actually that usable for most people that I tried to teach you to, and myself, in the real world, in business, in sales, as an, you, just, you, you couldn't essentially use the strategy. But what anchoring was about was about essentially setting some sort of outside trigger. So imagine, you know, the story of Pavlov's dog. Let me just take a sip of my uh, Red Bull here. Actually, let's say it's Rockstar. Okay. You know the story of Pavlov's dogs, right? So Russian scientist back in the late 1800s, Ivan Pavlov. He had this really loud bell, a starving dog, and a juicy piece of meat, right? So what he did was testing out, you know, how to, what, about influence and patterns. And what he did is he had the starving dog and he would ring this giant, this really loud bell at the same moment he would introduce to the, the dog's vision a piece of juicy filet mignon, right? And but what happened is, is that when the dog saw the filet mignon, his mouth would start to water. And the bell was ringing in the background, which was just coincidental. And then he did it the next day again. And he had a starving dog, same dog, right? And he introduced the piece of meat. In the same instant, he rang this really loud bell. Well, pretty soon, what he found out was that he didn't have to even introduce the meat anymore. The mere sound of the bell was enough to make the dog salivate. Because ever, in the beginning, he'd show the dog the meat, he'd salivate, right? After five or 10 times, what happened? the dog would simply salivate by hearing the bell. So the dog essentially had linked the sound of the bell to a piece of filet mignon and salivation. And after that link became strong enough over time, you could essentially remove the meat, ring the bell, and the dog would salivate. Makes sense, right? You probably all heard of that experiment, Pavlov's dog, right? So essentially what happened was a Pav Pavlov hypothesized, which was correct, that there were these linkages forming in the brain that, you know, so there's sort of three things, you know, Dog starving, sees meat, causes salvation naturally. That's a natural response. But the ringing of the bell happens at the same time. The brain eventually links the two together so strongly after a while, especially if it's really intense. That's why it's a starving dog, a beautiful piece of meat, and a loud bell, you know, a bell that can wake the dead, basically, right? So essentially what happens is the dog links up the bell with salvation. In that experiment, the bell is called your, that ringing bell is called your anchor. 
It's an anger. You set an anger. And it's called firing off your anger when you ring it. So essentially, in that situation, the bell, the loud bell that can wake the dead, is an anger for the dog. And when you ring the bell, the terminology we use is called firing off an anger. You get it? So you fire off an anger, and in this case, the dog would salivate. Well, many years later, Dr. Bandler had this theory that, you know, human beings aren't that much different than dogs, and he worked on this strategy in part of NLP, state management, called it anchoring, and developed a very, very powerful strategy and theory for getting someone to essentially get anchored into a certain state. So imagine if it was that simple, you could ring a bell, and imagine if you had linked it up to a state of certainty, and every time you rang the bell, wham, you went to a state of absolute certainty, right? If you've ever attended a Tony Robbins event, right, when it was a UPW, right, no one does it better than him. He's an expert in that moment of getting people into a state of absolute certainty. Where the music is playing, the lights are flashing, the dancers are on stage, and he's screaming, he's jumping, he's eight foot nine, his fucking hands are the size of fucking catches bits, and everyone's freaking out, and everyone's like, yes, 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 and everyone's like, yes, yes, and they're like, oh my God, I said it, and I go, unfortunately, that doesn't work, seriously. Very, I mean, like 0.01% of the people that are actually set in anger. In other words, they feel great in that moment. Yes, he got them to a very high level of certainty and feeling great, but doesn't work like that in the real world. Very, very hard to set an anger.